In this video, we're going to look at the new USW Ultra Switch, go over the specs, talk about the lineup, and also get it adopted to Hostify using our new device discovery tool. Welcome back to Hostify, my name's Alex. This is the new Ultra Switch, and it's part of the new Ultra line of devices, which is all about flexibility, as well as being as cost effective as possible. We previously looked at the UK Ultra access point. There's a link above my head or in the description down below to check that video out. So the Ultra Switch then, it comes in three different flavors, but all of them are literally identical. There are three different SKUs, one without a power supply, so you can use the Peary++ port for the input, which is on the back. The 60 watt version comes with a 60 watt power supply, and then the 210 version comes with, you guessed it, a 210 watt power supply. The only difference between all of them is what PSU they come with. So why have three different SKUs? Well, because in Unify they all actually show three different models. Well, one thing I thought of was the original USW Flex. I would imagine that some people had issues with powering certain devices and then those connected devices would reboot due to the power supply type not being checked. The difference in software between the 60 watt version and the 210 watt version is literally what PSU option is pre-selected for you. Having the correct option should mean that people don't have issues with the Peary budget on them. Bear in mind though, there isn't anything stopping you from upgrading a switch down the road. Just bear in mind that Ubiquiti doesn't sell power supplies separately. When the Ultra Switch was first launched, it did lack the ability to have custom port profiles and VLAN tagging on the switch ports. However, with version 1.1.11 firmware released on the 20th of March, they do now have the ability to do so. The only thing that Ultra Switch lacks is the ability to adopt via SSH, which is where our new device discovery tool comes in. Let's get the box opened and see what the hardware looks like. So we've got typical sort of Ubiquiti brown packaging here. No knife to use to open the box as well, which is good. And you can see the switch and the power supply is all stacked quite neatly in there. Uh, so there's a switch by itself, quite small actually. And we've got the 60 watt power supply adapter as well. And there's a few accessories in the box. So the switch itself, we've got seven ports on the front, all of which have Peary out. Uh, on the top got the Ubiquiti logo. On the back, uh, we've got a barrel plug for 54 volt in. We've also got the Peary++ port input as well. You can use Peary++ to power the device, but you obviously get less uh, Peary output on the switch. So again, we've got those seven ports on the front, all of which have Peary output. That's a really good option compared to the eight light Peary and also the older eight 60 watt Peary switch as well. Okay, let's get this thing adopted to Hostify. So we're now gonna get the US Ultra switch adopted to our Hostify controller. You can see I've got my Unify controller in the background and I've also got the Hostify device discovery tool. If you want to download this discovery tool, there's a link in the description down below. You can download it for macOS, Windows, Linux, iOS, and Android. It works on all those devices. Uh, you can see if I manually clear the, the list of devices that the app has found, the US Ultra Switch always comes back by itself. So it's picked up the US Ultra Switch. It's on the IP address, got version uh, 1.1.7. There is also 1.1.11 available in RC form. It does add the custom port profiles and VLAN tagging as well. So it's a really welcome update to the Ultra Switch. So if I run a manual scan, it also does find an entry to X. Uh, it's worth bearing in mind that if you've got a Unify AP or a switch or anything uh, plugged into a UXG network, so the UXG or the USG is the gateway, and that particular device is adopted to a external controller, the UXG and the USG will actually do some basically DHCP magic to get the device to inform itself uh, to the Unify controllers. So basically DHP option 43 There's a guide in the description down below to show you how to manually configure that if you've got an edge router as well. The reason I've got it plugged into an edge router is to stop that from happening and just show you how the device discovery tool works. So you can see in the URL bar here I've got the uh, host name for my Unify controller. So if we go to settings on the device discovery tool app uh, you can see I've put my default inform URL in there. If you're with Hostify for your Unify hosting if you go to app.hostify.com, you'll find the host name for your particular controller in there. It also it will give you the inform URL to quickly copy and paste into the device discovery tool if you're looking to do that. If you haven't got that to hand, uh, basically the format is the URL in the middle there. So the uh, numbers basically .hostify.com colon 8080 forward slash inform. And at the very start, make sure you've got HTTP colon slash slash rather than HTTPS, otherwise it won't actually work. And again, make sure that this second part of the URL is actually in there. Again, it won't actually do anything otherwise. Make sure to click Save, and then click on X. If we go to Adopt on the US Ultra Switch, we click on Adopt again. It will tell me that uh, it's successfully sent the adoption request to the server. Use Unify Network to complete the adoption process. Okay, let's go back to our Unify controller and see if it's popped up or anything. So yeah, you can see here on my UXG site that the US Ultra Switch has appeared. I've got a UXG light that's actually offline. 
uh, at the moment it's not actually plugged into anything so you can see our us ultra switch has popped up the reason we have to do a special process using the device discovery tool app is because the us ultra switch can't be adopted manually using the manual set and form method using ssh the ultra switch just doesn't have an ssh interface to control neither does the flex mini it's one of the reasons why the device discovery tool is so useful it means you can adopt these switches without doing all that faff with the dhp option 43 or making sure you've got a uxg on your network or any other one of those processes so we click on click to adopt what you'll notice is as soon as you've clicked adopt uh, that the switch will disappear from the list so as soon as it says getting ready and it goes to online it's now disappeared from this list you can only now find the age router x or any other devices that are pending adoption uh, on your new on your network so you can see in a matter of seconds the us ultra switch is now available to use uh, you can see here we've got the port manager um, we've got the IP address on there, we've got the firmware version. I'm going to update this to 1.1.11 and just show you the uh, custom port profiles and the manual VLAN tagging. So to do that, just come down to settings, uh, scroll down to manual firmware update, and we can put the URL in there for that firmware update. So I've got the Unify Switch Ultra release notes here. So it says US-Ultra 60 watt 210 as well. So just copy that one there. You can see that it's a, they've highlighted all of them. It's the same firmware version for all of them. Come down to here, copy and paste that in, press update and it should take a few minutes and that'll be up to date for us. So after a few minutes, the US Ultra Switch is now up to date. It's now saying click to update. The reason you'll see this is because the version of firmware that Unify Controller sees as current uh, is basically older than the version that we've updated to. So the version we've updated to is 1.1.11. That's an RC update. So let's look at the options on the US Ultra Switch. So you can see I've got the external power adapter options. So I've got 60 watt or 210. If you've purchased the 210 one, you'll see 210 as selected by default. So that's basically telling the switch how much power it can deliver to the, to the devices. Uh, we've also got port manager in here. So let's look at the VLAN tags that you can now do as of this new firmware update. So uh, let's look at native VLANs. So we've got uh, Hostify, VLAN 10, for example, untagged. We could do uh, custom, tagged VLANs, and we can tag VLAN 12 and VLAN 15. And that's essentially a custom uh, VLAN port for that. We've also got some usual stuff in here. So we've got the logs for the switch, we've got the system performance, we've got settings, again, external power adapters, uh, IP address settings, global switch settings. You can enable or disable the LED. We're pretty used to this stuff by now uh, on the Unify switches. Uh, we've got the uptime in there, parent device, and that sort of thing. That's going to do it for this video. If you've enjoyed what we do, don't forget to subscribe to the host of our YouTube channel. My name's Alex, and I'll see you again in the next one.